Time to get on the bus and head over to the historic area. Garden District, famous for its 19th century homes and gardens. This area was originally part of Ladivia's plantation, but became part of city of Lafayette, 1833, annexed by city of New Orleans, 1852, designated a National Historic Landmark, 1974. 89, Anne Rice purchased the house to write the Mayfair Witches series there, featuring the Brevard House as the ancestral home of the Mayfair Witches. Today, the plaque outside the mansion proclaims the official name to be the Brevard Rice House, but it's more commonly referred to as the Anne Rice House. Crawford House at 1315 1st Street. Built in 1869 for Joseph Carroll Samuel James Jameson. Uh, Carroll was known for throwing fancy parties. I could imagine fancy that house. and raunchy parties. With important guests such as Mark Twain. Think about it, Mark Twain party in this mansion and maybe even found inspiration in, in its walls. This is the Morris Israel House built by the same architect as Carroll House. Check out the similarities between the two was the point they were trying That's to make. Great. The legend goes, one man had seven daughters and built these homes from the for them as wedding presents to keep them close. The actual story is less romantic. Henry Hall modeled the houses after the work of famed architect Henry Howard around 1868. His goal was to appeal to those on a modest income that were interested in the Garden District. The Seven Sisters, there's eight total buildings, are shotgun houses so-called because of their layout where theoretically you could fire a gun through the front door and when it would go all, the bullet would go all the way to the back. And shotgun houses are a trademark of New Orleans architecture. And these are the only examples of shotgun houses in the Garden District. Hi, you live here? I sure do. You, do you like these houses? I love it. She's long and strong. This French style mansion was built in 1872 for Bradish Johnson by James Ferret, and, but has served as a private all girls school. The Louise S. McGeehee school since 1929. The school expanded to include many other buildings in the block, which is I think what's next door, but it remains an icon of the McGeehee school history. At 2340 is Toby's Corner. This is the oldest house in the Garden District. Thomas Toby built this Greek Revival masterpiece in 1838, lost the home in foreclosure in 1858. Shortly thereafter, Thomas Dugan purchased the property for his daughter and it's still in his family to this day. 2340. And then there's a I don't look that old. Uh-uh. But this is the oldest house in the district. This beauty behind me, built in 1859 for Merchant Edward Davis, was purchased in 1944 by the Seabold family, who then willed it to the Women's Opera Guild upon their deaths in 1965. Hollywood films including Elisa and Peter, as well as Django Unchained. Today's Opera Guild mansion is available to rent for weddings and social events, so we'll have our next wedding there. The Mother of Perpetual Help Chapel, built in 1852 for Joseph Maddox, owner of the New Orleans Daily Crescent. In 1925, the Redemptionist Fathers converted the mansion into a Catholic chapel. That's how it got its trademark Iron Pavilion and Virgin Mary statue with its Mother of Perpetual Help dedication for its name. Sadly, they were removed by the current owners, and Rice converted the chapel back into a home in 1996 and inspired the setting for her book, Violin. Nick Cage owned the home from 2005 until 2009, or then it went into foreclosure, and today it's a private residence. This is the Briggs Staub House. Briggs had this goth cottage built in 1849, and today it's still considered the only gothic style home in the Garden District. Even though the college cottage isn't nearly as massive as the neighboring homes, and I don't know, but that, that's not a small house, just so we're clear on that. The contrast is part of what gives this house its charm. It's also one of the first in the Garden District to have indentured servants and free men of color as workers instead of slaves. So if you walk by this house, you can feed your dog and get yourself some water. <laughs> and the dog some water. Oh, that works well. Mm. Hose water. This is the Sully Mansion, designed by Thomas Sully in 1890 for the Rainey family. It's the best preserved of the few remaining houses designed by Sully. The three-story Queen Anne style today is currently a bed and breakfast, but they won't let us This is Colonel Short's villa. Again, designed by Henry Howard for Robert Short in 1859. During the Civil War, the house was seized by federal troops, and in 1864, the villa was used by Michael Hahn, the governor of Louisiana. General Nathan P. Banks occupied it Ooh, after that. It wasn't until the end of the war that the property was leased to the Colonel in 1865. Colonel Short lived here until 1890. It's best known for its easily, easily recognizable cornstalk fence and is sometimes referred to as the Cornstalk House. 
Um, one explanation was that his uh, Colonel Short's wife was homesick for the Iowa cornfields. Another says she simply ordered the most expensive fence available at the time. It was bought by Paul, Paul McCartney's manager, Scott Rogers, in, in 2018 and he did extensive work on the property including adding a pool i don't think he's going to let us in either this is lafayette cemetery number one named after the city of lafayette which would later become the garden district the cemetery has been active since 1833 there lies an estimated 7,000 people here some of the most notable people are judge ferguson of the plessy versus ferguson separate but equal case several historic volunteer firemen organizations which are now extinct the Mayfair Witches in Anne Rice's Mayfair Witches series, the tomb for the witches in the witching hour, looks like the Lafayette Fireman tombs. It's currently closed for um, renovations. I'd like to talk to you about your car's extended warranty. Anybody? <laughs> Anybody at all? Bueller? <laughs> you can go door to door. Aside from its title as one of the Garden District's most haunted locations, the food at Commander's is famous for a reason and has won a variety of awards. Two of NOAA's most famous chefs, Chef Paul, mm, got nothing, and Emeril have gotten their start here. Emeril Lagasse? Yep, that's the one. Commander's Palace was first established as a saloon in 1893 by the original owner, Emil Commander. Today, the restaurant is a garden district icon known for its southern charm, award-winning Creole cuisine, and fun-looking bright blue Victorian masterpiece that houses it. Um, inside the style is traditional fine dining and the dress code is strictly enforced. Strictly. Best known for its appearance in the curious case of Benjamin Button, 8,000 square foot cottage has been, has been owned by three generations of the Nolan family. Based on the short story by F. Scott Fitzgerald, Benjamin Button, uh, the film, it was filmed almost entirely in New Orleans. Nearly every room in the house was used for the movie and many scenes are instantly recognizable on the house's porch, front steps, and interior. This is the Walter Grinnan Robinson House. This is one of the Garden District's largest estates at around 12,000 square feet. Built in 1859 as the masterpiece of one of New Orleans' most famous architects, Henry Howard, who has designed two other homes on this tour as well. This two-story home is best recognized by its wraparound porches on both of its floors, the wraparounds, was one of the first homes in New Orleans to feature running water. It is currently the home of Mickey Loomis, who is the general manager of the New Orleans Saints. This go. charming Swiss chalet was built in 1867 by William, somebody for James, somebody else. This was only one of three houses in this style in the entire city of New Orleans, perhaps because this style of architecture is not so practical in such a hot and humid climate. As of 2009, this chalet has served as actress Sandra Bullock's home. It's called the Eustesis Bullock House, 2624 Coliseum Street. We are done with that tour of the Garden District, looking at different houses and where they came from, the history of them and all that. And then we were heading back to the room, probably gonna get something to eat. And then we got a ghost tour lined up tonight. <laughs>